And I do think diversity and representation is extremely important. Obviously, I'm a huge advocate of both, right? Mm -hmm. But when it comes to you personally, you need to know your why, why you're doing anything in your life. And I think if you get too caught up in like the identity politics of like, well, I want to be the first this and they need to have the first that, then you're kind of muddying your purpose a little bit. Hey family, I'm Lisa Song Sutton and you're doing Life with Lakeisha on Living Her Truth. Welcome to the Living Her Truth podcast, where we have honest conversations about what it means to live a purpose-driven life. I am your host, Lakeisha Woodard from LakeishaWoodard.com, the place where women receive the tools necessary to feel seen, heard, and supported while pursuing their purpose. And now every week, you'll learn those same tools through candid and transparent conversations. Lisa, thank you so much for saying yes to have this conversation with me today. Absolutely. Thank you so much for having me. I'm excited about this conversation and it's right on time because we are living in the middle of a pandemic. In my opinion, we have a recession on the rise and we need to have some hard conversations. And I think you're the perfect person to start the conversation off, right? So... For every episode, I love to start off with just talking about how I come to know the person that I'm having a conversation with, and this episode is no different. So, you know, you reached out to me to be a part of the podcast and just to sit down and have a conversation. And, you know, you wanted to talk about, you know, community building and how to incorporate that in entrepreneurship. And I listened to your, your TED Talk like a couple of times, and I was like, <laughs> oh yeah, me and Lisa oh yeah, we could definitely sit down and talk. We could definitely sit down and talk. And so, like I said before, I'm super excited about this conversation. So let's start off. Let's dig a little bit into your background. Tell us, how did you go from modeling to pageantry to entrepreneurship? Because yes, you guys, I have like a Miss Nevada, right? Miss Nevada. <laughs> yes. I have a Miss Nevada on yes. the podcast. I'm blowing up, <laughs> y'all, I'm blowing up. <laughs> For sure. Um, well, you know, I, uh, I started in modeling when I was in school, when I was in college and in grad school. Um, I had a chance to model and um, that was a wonderful experience. I made lifelong friends, even met some business partners, you know, through, through that experience. And so mm -hmm. um, I just, you know, that, that was my like job during school, right? And um, yeah, it just kind of progressed from there. I finished school, started working in a law firm in Las Vegas and um, you know, quickly realized I'm able to, you know, start companies and start kind of building as well. And so that's what I did. I started my first company in 2012 called Sin City Cupcakes. I was still working full time at the law firm. Um, and so I did that in a way that like mitigated risk for me, like my bills were still paid. Right. And I was still able to earn money to fund my company. Right. Cause in the beginning you have no money, you have no sales. Mm -hmm. And, and that was the way that I bootstrapped everything. Um, with the pageantry that came about, um, my mom is a former Miss Korea and she called me the fall of 2013 and she said, are you competing for Miss Las Vegas? And I was like, I don't know. I'm kind of busy. Like we, you know, we had just gotten some city cupcakes off the ground, you know, I was working mm -hmm. and she was like, well, you're getting ready to age out. I was like, okay. <laughs> so I didn't wake up one day, you know, you're aging out of pageantry and modeling with the Miss Division, M-I-S-S, -S, with the Miss Division, mm -hmm. 29 is the age cutoff. Mm -hmm. So I was 28 the fall of 2013. The state pageant, Miss Nevada, United States, was May of 2014. And I had already turned 29 by that point. So that was my last opportunity to hold a state mm -hmm. title in like a major system. So... I like buckle down. I hired a pageant coach. I mean, it's just, it, it was a whole thing. You know, it, there's a lot of work that goes into it. It's not just put on a swimsuit, get a spray tan and, and you're ready to go. I mean, if you're serious which is what about we winning, think, which is what we think those of us on the outside looking in. Sure. Sure. Um, it, it, there's so much work that goes into it. Um, and I think people don't realize as well is that a lot of it's community-based. 
There's so much volunteer work and community work and public service platform that goes into pageantry. Um, and so for me, you know, like I said, I hired a pageant coach and buckled down and got to work. And, um, you know, in competing in the Miss United States organization, there are four areas of competition when you compete. Interview, swimsuit, evening gown, and on stage question. Four areas of competition, they're all weighted evenly. So what you don't realize is that 50% of your score is talking. Interview and on stage question, right? Five zero, 50% 50 of your score. Mm -hmm. So that, that's why it's important um, to be able to be an, an ambassador for the organization and showcase the community work that you're doing. Um, and so my pageant coach that I worked with, his specialty is interview, right? Because he, he was like, look, he was like, at the le at state level, at, at the Miss Nevada United States pageant, let's face it, people are going to be working on their fitness. Like they're going to be, they're going to look great in swimsuit, presumably, right? They're going to look great in swimsuit. They're going to look great in their evening gown. So what else? right? Like how else can you differentiate yourself? And, you know, I came in with these like perceived disadvantages. I was the shortest contestant when I competed in, in pageantry, you know, that's a, that's a drawback. Um, and so we knew that I had to really blow them away in interview and an onstage question. And that's what I drilled. I worked on that. Like, I mean, we, he and I would have weekly, like, coaching sessions, conversations. And then during the week I was drilling, I was, um, you know, keeping up on current events. I was working through paperwork that just got me in the practice of answering those types of questions of, well, you know, what do you plan to do with your year? What's your public service platform? Um, why is this important to you? What are you going to be doing within the community? What work have you already done? I mean, these are all questions if you aren't prepared and haven't done any work, if you haven't done any community work out in the field, right, out in the community, you have mm -hmm. nothing to say. You have nothing to answer, right? Mm -hmm. So um, once I won, that was when like a real work began. I did nearly 500 community appearances, volunteering in schools, reading in hospitals, working with nonprofits. This is all volunteer. I didn't get paid a dime. Like, you are volunteering your time working with all these nonprofits, traveling around the state, um, going into a lot of schools, get a chance to meet a ton of kids, which is awesome. Um, and that's, that's your role. To me, in my opinion, if you're a good title holder, if you're a good pageant title holder, it's because you've done a ton of community work. And um, I, I had an incredible experience. I'm really grateful for it. Man, so many gems that you just dropped just with like telling your story. Like I want to point out um, because first off, you worked at, you started your business in 2012, right? But you still work at the law firm to fund your business. Like I don't want people to like skip over that because I feel like, you know, well, before the pandemic, I feel like entrepreneurship was the it thing to get into. Like it was the thing that everybody it's did. It's trendy now. Yeah, yeah it's, it's trendy. trendy now, right? Yeah. And it's like, if you, because I've even been, you know, told that if you are working a job while, you know, running your business, that you're not a true entrepreneur. And it's just like, but, but if it makes sense for me to continue working and fund my business that way to right. relieve financial stress so right. I can stick to my business, like, why wouldn't I do that? Like, that makes sense, right? So I love the fact that you, you know, was open and willing to, to share that. And another thing, too, that I don't want people to skip over is the fact that when you decided to enter into pageantry, that you leaned in on your differences. Mm -hmm. So many of us want to like hide our differences because we want to fit in so badly. But I love the fact that you lean into that and use that to like further separate you from everybody else so you can stand out which ultimately mm -hmm. landed you the crown. Like, I absolutely love that. So I, I don't want people to like, you know, I want people to really hear that because, you know, in this world that we're living in right now, like we're going to have to lean on our differences. Like that's what's, that's what's going to, what it's going to take to help us to move to that next level, whatever that level is for us on the individual, you know, as an individual, you know? Mm -hmm. um, so I can only imagine, you know, being a, a former beauty queen, you know, going into the business world, people probably didn't even take you seriously because like you said, it's not all about, you know, 
tans and just being able to fit into a, a swimsuit, you know, when you're doing pageantry, which is what the majority of us on the outside looking in, like I said earlier, that's what we tend to, we tend to think. And mm -hmm. also being of Asian descent, I'm pretty sure that going into meetings and boardrooms, being on, on conference calls, you know, you was probably the only person that looked like you on the phone call, right? Sure. And now that we are, you know, in the middle of a fight against injustice, you know, um, I feel like people of color, black people in particular, but people of color has gone from being invisible to maybe being the spokesperson for all people of color, right? Mm -hmm. And some of us, like, we don't want that role. We didn't sign up for that. So mm -hmm. how can we give us some tips on how we can represent ourselves in a way that feels good when we represent our culture, but we're out solidifying the fact that, oh, so now I'm the, the spokesperson for all people of color. Mm -hmm. It's all about authenticity, right? I mean, even going back to the pageant, right? Competing in that, mm -hmm. I wanted to win because I wanted that for myself. I knew that I had it in me to be a good representative to, you know, do a lot for the community. The, the day after I won, see the pageant was like in the evening, right? Like I got crowned, the whole thing. The mm -hmm. next morning I woke up and there were headlines that were like, first Miss Nevada of Asian descent mm -hmm. crowned, right? And I was like, oh my gosh, like I, I didn't compete to, to win that title, right? Or I didn't compete because of that. Oh, there's not been a Miss Nevada of Asian descent. I should compete. I didn't do it because of that, right? I did it for me and for myself. And then it was pointed out after the fact, oh, she's the first Miss Nevada of Asian descent. And I was like, cool. Like I, I embraced that, right? And I'm, I'm happy to, and I'm proud to um, also have that as part of my achievements during that time. Mm -hmm. But I think it's important to like, just be authentic and do you and be you and know why, like, why are you doing what you're doing? Why do you want to start a business? Why are you building that business? Why are you engaged? Why are you doing that? Like, you should know your why, whether it's why you're competing in a pageant or why you're starting a business. Like you should know your why. And I think sometimes people get caught up in why well, I want to be the first this, or they don't have any minorities here, or they don't have like, I think sometimes people get real caught up in that. And I do think diversity and representation is extremely important. Obviously, I'm a huge advocate of both, right? Mm -hmm. But when it comes to you personally, you need to know your why, why you're doing anything in your life. And I think if you get too caught up in like the identity politics of like, well, I want to be the first this and they need to have the first that, then you're kind of muddying your purpose a little bit. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? Like, like you're muddying it up a little bit and you're getting a little lost in maybe something that, that isn't true to who you are and why you're really doing something mm -hmm. right you're not you're not gonna be able to stick to something when the times get tough if you don't really believe in it and it's not true to you right the second it gets hard you're like oh i don't really like it anyway right so that's really important i think you gotta you gotta be authentic you gotta stick to your why and you have to figure out your why well before you jump into the endeavor otherwise you're not gonna see it through Mm, that was so good because you're absolutely right you know if if you're not following purpose it can just mess up everything and completely take you off take you out of alignment i'm all about helping you know women to pivot from perfection to purpose because purpose is, is what's going to guide us what's just going to keep us in alignment which is something that i also want to you know talk to you about um talk to you about as well because in your ted talk you talked about how you had all these buckets, right? Yep. And you talked about how having all these buckets, you saw that yourself was stressed out and being spread thin. And then you had the bright idea to merge the buckets. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yes, yeah. Tell us, how did that, you know, what, what caused you to really notice that you had all of these separate buckets? And then once you did the merging, like, how did it affect you personally and professionally? 
So previously, you know, when I was starting up the businesses, um, I just, I did, I had these really separate buckets, right? I had this bucket of, of people that I would converse with for business. I had this bucket of people that were like my personal friends and like longtime friends. Um, and then I had like a community bucket and these were just you know, people and endeavors that I would interact with when I was doing volunteer work or it, they were all so bifurcated. Everything was so separate and siloed. And I felt like I was like running and jumping around constantly. Um, and then one day I just, I had this realization. I was like, why do I feel like this? And why do I feel like I have to do this? Right. Why do I have to feel like this? Mm -hmm. And, and I realized there's no reason to keep these firewalls up. I should be introducing my long-term friends to my business partners. I should be introducing my community leader friends to the people that I, you know, do other work with. Like, why don't I have more cohesion? Why is there not more cohesion? These are all good people. You can learn something from everybody. Like everyone needs to meet each other. And even if I'm the only nexus, if I'm like the connector, like that's okay. Mm -hmm. And that's what I did. And, and it was just, it was such a beautiful thing because now the people in my life have relationships with each other. You know what I'm saying? They've become friends. They've become business colleagues. They've become, you know, social friends, whatever. And it's because they met through me, right? Like they got a chance to connect because I wasn't so worried about keeping everything siloed and already kind of making that judgment. Oh, well, they probably won't get along with each other or they don't have anything in common or who am I to decide that, right? So mm -hmm, mm -hmm. if you are the nexus and you have like kind of all these different groups and buckets in your life, like it's okay for them to meet. It's okay for you maybe to be the one sole common bond that they have mm -hmm. because there is a strong chance that they will align with each other. And then you get this really great opportunity to bring more cohesion into your life and everything kind of aligns up. Mm -hmm. I love that. And, you know, also too that cohesion, I love that word cohesion. It also gives you the opportunity to strengthen your network. You know, oh, so in my, yeah, in my master life class, strategize your vision, you know, I, I teach you how to build a support system, a support system that, that's going to support you on your self-awareness journey, you know, because operating from a place of purpose is not easy because like you said earlier, we need to know our why right that's super important but that doesn't that doesn't necessarily mean that the journey is going to be easy but if mm -hmm. you have a, a support team in place you know it helps you to get over those those robots and by creating that cohesion that you talked about that's just you elevating you know your network and making sure that your network is sufficient to support you because i truly mm -hmm. believe that you know there's a scarcity mindset when it comes to um relationships you know sure, um, sure. and we shouldn't have a, a a scarcity mindset when it comes to relationships because we need people we need the mm -hmm. interaction we need that connection you know and mm -hmm. so creating that cohesion man i just know that life just got a whole lot easier because like you said like who said that we needed to keep everything separate like who made that rule <laughs> mm -hmm. no it's true it's so true and like I love that you brought up scarcity mindset because I, if there's anything that I've learned and I have incredible people in my life, incredible mentors that I learned from, right. Um, people who I look up to who are very successful in business and legacy wealth building mm -hmm. every single one of them, regardless of, you know, how different their lives are and their backgrounds and where they come from and all the one thing they all have in common, every single one, they all have an abundant mindset. Mm -hmm. there is more than enough for everybody. You know what I mean? Like abundance mindset is the key. And so for me, like I love making introductions for people, right? Like if there's a vendor or someone that, you know, I've been able to work with really well and it's worked out and someone says, Hey, I like, I need someone for this. I'm happy to make that intro. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like you don't have to say, Oh no, like that, I need to keep it private. Like that's who I use. I don't want them. Like why? Why be like that? And it's all about that abundance mindset. It's key, I think. Mm -hmm. I 100% I agree with you. And when you surround yourself around people who have an abundance mm -hmm. mindset, guess what? You tend to have a yes. abundance mindset as well. Yes. Of <laughs> course, saying, absolutely. You know, that saying birds of a, of a feather flock together, 
Yes. It is so, it is so true. Now mm-hmm. in your, your business, you know, your messaging changed, right? Based off of all the community service that you did, it went, it changed from, you know, to community to the importance of volunteering, you mm-hmm. know, for the crowd. So did your, did your passion for community work derive from purpose or did you infuse purpose into your community work? So I got exposed to volunteering and community work when I was really young. Um, My parents, we would just volunteer through our church, actually. So it was like, you know, um, Salvation Army or, you know, these different things. Um, And so I got exposed young to the idea of give back when you can. You know, if you have more than someone else, like it's your responsibility to you can, you know, help, help set an example and help lead the way and, and help, help someone, you know, with with a, with a hand up. Right. Mm -hmm. Um, and, and so I grew up around that and then, um, you know, did some volunteer work in, in college and grad school kind of here and there, but my, my volunteering and community involvement really stepped up actually during my time with the pageant. Lisa, as a small business owner, how do we, how do we give back? You know, why is community important? Why should we pay attention to that right now? Because we're living in the middle of a pandemic, right? And social Mm -hmm. distancing is, is a thing. So why is volunteering and, and giving back so important right now? There's so many ways as a small business you can give back and it doesn't have to be in the form of like those like big giant checks you see like on TV or something, right? Like as a small business, I get it. Like money is tight, especially right now, you know, we're going through a lot of different ups and downs and a lot of businesses are facing challenges. Um, You know, you can still support your community um, and it doesn't have to be through uh, writing a big check, right? Um, for example, we just did this actually with our shipping stores, um, uh, Nellis Air Force Base, which is um, an Air Force Base that's here locally. Uh, they were doing a backpack drive for back to school um, to take in donations of school supplies for um, for their kids. And um, so we set up both stores as drop-off locations um, to collect school supplies that were donated by the community. And just something as simple as, as being able to have your location serve as a drop-off place for, you know, we've done clothing drives, we've done back to school drives. Um, anything like that really helps an organization because oftentimes, you know, maybe they only have one location. So they need multiple locations that are around the city for people to be able to drop stuff off at too. Um, so that's just, you know, one simple way that you can give back as a small business. Um, you know, in volunteering your time uh, through social media, even, you know, if, if you have a, a social media presence, if your business has a social media presence, um, you can let a, a local charity know, hey, we'd, we'd be happy to share that flyer. We'd be happy to share, you know, the um, locations that you have available for food pickup, food bank pickup or something like that. And just something as simple as posting on your social media, reposting a flyer that a nonprofit has out there. That's helpful. That's very, very helpful to them. And it costs you nothing. Um, yet you're still able to show that you support this community that you live and work in. Man, I love that. That's, those are some really good, those are some really good examples. You know, I, I recently did a talk on how to rebuild confidence during the pandemic, you know, rebuild mm-hmm. confidence that this pandemic has literally sucked up out of us. Right. And I talked about how you can build confidence by focusing on service, right? To be more generous because when you, you know, practice generosity, it just makes you feel good. Mm -hmm. You know, providing a service or being of service to other people just makes you feel good. And when you feel good, you do good. And when you do good, you do more. Mm -hmm. And you doing more helps you to build that confidence, you know, that Mm -hmm. you need to continue on in your business. So Mm -hmm. I I love that you, that you bring that up because doing something as simple as sharing a flyer for, you know, a a charity on your social media, you know, it it helps you to be involved. And it also, you know, gives God something to bless, blessing your efforts. Cause like you said, it's not all about writing a check, you know, volunteering your, your time and using your resources to help somebody else out. Mm -hmm. Like all that's going to do is come back on you tenfold. And I'm not saying that, you know, to encourage you just to do things with the intention of wanting to get. Sure. Yeah. But it's just a great way to, um, you know, to build confidence in your business, to stay active in your business. And people remember that people remember Mm -hmm. how you make them feel, Mm -hmm. you know, 
you know, we, we purchase things based off of emotions. So mm-hmm. if you're that business that, you know, helped charity out in a time of need, people are going to remember that. Absolutely. People are definitely going to remember that. So how are you, you know, maintaining your alignment in the current economy, you know, uh, and how can we do the same? Like, how can we maintain the alignment with our purpose? This is a purpose. Yeah. Yeah. And, you know, I think this is, it's something that's constantly recalibrated, right? Because you're going to have days where it's real easy to be in alignment, right? And then other days where it's really hard. So don't get discouraged on those hard days because I think it's human nature. I mean, everybody is going to have those days where you're just like, I don't feel good today. Right. Or like, or there's something that's still like stuck with you or stuck inside you. Um, But what we do need to do and remember to do is to push through, right. You have to still get out of bed. You still like put on, like when I feel like days like that, I like to like get ready. Like I like to like put on a full face of makeup and like, you know what I'm saying? And like get dressed. Right. And like feel good. Like that makes me feel good. So I want to do what I need to do to feel good and, you know, make a little cappuccino or whatever, you know what I mean? Like, like feel good. So that way, like you have now set the tone for the rest of the day. Uh huh. You know, I have a accountability group that I meet with uh, every week um, just to keep me accountable and in my business. And so um, <laughs> one of the ladies in the group, she said, you know, she really needed to get some stuff done for the day. So she got up and she got fully dressed, yeah. right? Because, you know, we've been in this pandemic and so we've been in pajamas, you know, because mm-hmm. all business up here, you guys, but on the bottom, mm-hmm. you know, mm-hmm. and right. we've gotten used to that. So it's funny that you bring that up because she did that. So to make herself, you know, get into that productivity mode, mm-hmm. calibrate, you know, her, her mm-hmm. mind, her mindset, you know, she just got fully dressed as if she was going to work, even though she was literally going to the desk, you know, at the dinner, dining room table or whatever. Sure, sure. And when I told her, I was just like, oh, I'm going to have to use that. Yeah, <laughs> it's so, true. It's so real. Gave, yeah, yeah. It gave me that, that boost of energy to get things done for, for that, mm-hmm. for that day. But you are absolutely right. It's a daily recal- recalibration. Mm-hmm. it's a mm-hmm. daily acceleration you know people um, I get all the time you know you're just so passionate when you speak to people like you are so passionate about what you do and it's just like how and it's like because I work on myself every single day it's mm-hmm. not a day that goes by that I'm not doing something self-care wise that's going to pour back into me because as a self-awareness coach I'm literally pouring into people constantly. Yes. Right? Mm-hmm. And we all know that it's never good to pour from an empty cup. So on a You big- can't. You, you can't draw water from an empty well. That's a, that's a real thing, right? Like It's a real thing. It's a yeah. real thing. And so mm-hmm. I, I work on me every day. I, you know, I believe that self-care is a daily thing. So when you say, you know, recalibrate, you know, to stay in alignment on a daily basis, that's what I was like. Yes, mm-hmm. people need to do that. It's not all about getting massages every two weeks. And I'm not saying there's nothing anything wrong with massages every two weeks, but we have to work on each ourselves every single, every single day. Every yeah. single day. I love mm-hmm. that. Lisa, you are amazing. Have you heard that you are amazing yet today? <laughs> Thank you so much. I really appreciate you. This was an amazing conversation, but before I let you go, I want to know, give us one hardcover book or audible book, because I'm addicted to audible, that you have read or listened to that has impacted you in a positive way. Yeah. So uh, Tim Ferriss, he's got a great podcast. He has a book called Tools of Titans, Mm -hmm. Tools of Titans, and um, there's a follow-up to it called Tribe of Mentors. So either one, they're excellent. I would recommend getting both. Um, And what the book, it's huge. Don't be overwhelmed because it looks like a dictionary. It's a big, thick, fat, hardcover. You're like, what is this? But what I love about it is that, you know, Tim Ferriss has had podcasts for maybe a decade. He's had this really amazing podcast and he has interviewed every successful person that you've heard of and every successful person you have not heard of. And it's literally people at the top of their, right? Like the the peak triathlete, someone, someone like, I've never heard his name. He's not a household name. Right. But 
my goodness, there's things to learn from him, right? And so basically what these two books are, Tim Ferriss has taken kind of like the best of the best of his podcasts and like boiled them down to like two pages a piece. And in those two or three pages, so, so it's an easy thing, right? You can literally read two or three pages at a time and, and it's done. Um, in those two or three pages of each person that he's interviewed, mm -hmm. he pulls out those really tangible tips like, what time do you get up in the morning? What do you eat? What's your morning routine? How mm -hmm. do you stay motivated? What do you do for X? Mm -hmm. What type of supplements do you take? Like just mm -hmm. kind of tangible questions that sometimes we don't even think of, but it works for this successful person, right? I want to know what other successful people do in their daily lives, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. And that's what that book is. It's awesome. Mm, I'm going to have to check that. I'm going to have to check that out. So that's not like a book that I would probably want to actually get the hard copy. I like the hard copy because then you can highlight, make notes. Mm -hmm. I like the hard copy. But yeah, yeah it's, copy. it's easily uh, readily available on Amazon. Okay. Yeah. I'm going to have to check that out. And you guys, I'm going to um, put her, her book recommendations in the show notes. So just click on the link that says, you know, audible recommendations, hardcover book will be there as well. You know, I love the fact that you said that he has interviewed people, um, successful people that you've heard of and successful people that you haven't heard of. Mm -hmm. You guys don't skip over that. Just mm -hmm. because nobody knows you on a grand scale doesn't mean that you're not successful. Mm-hmm. There are exactly. many successful people out there that we don't know of. So please, whatever you do, do not, you know, like measure your success based on how many followers you have on social media. No, it doesn't mean anything. No. It, it literally many, doesn't mean anything. It yeah. literally means nothing. Because Lisa just said she was able to read this book and learn from successful people that she had never even heard of. Mm -hmm. Don't mm -hmm. skip over that. So, last question. When describing the meaning of living your truth, complete this phrase, okay? I want you to give me your third word when you hit these two words put together. Self-awareness, purpose, and... Gratitude. Ooh. Nobody <laughs> has said gratitude. I love that. Gratitude. Gratitude. Mm -hmm. Because when you know who you are, you're operating your purpose, you have no other choice. Or it becomes easier to just be grateful for what you have. I right. like, like, that. like, I think that goes hand in hand, especially with self-awareness. Like how, mm -hmm. how can you not be grateful if you don't have a level of awareness of like knowing who you are, where you are, what you're trying to do, who's around you. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, absolutely. And it's just really sad that people lose sight of that all the time. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. No, lead with gratitude, lead with gratitude if it's possible, because I think in the absence of that, that's when like ego comes into play, <sighs> right? Like, like you, th that's when so many other things can follow that while we do need a little bit of that, like something you do need a little bit of ego sometimes you need that confidence boost, you need whatever, you know, but you can't have it lead that that can't be the primary, you know, leader and focus because you're not going to get very far, you know? Mm -hmm. I love that. And also when you lead with gratitude, you're less likely to compare yourself to other people because you're just grateful for what you have already mm -hmm. so you can focus mm -hmm. on the why that Lisa mentioned earlier and, you know, and continue to operate from a place of purpose and not from a place of perception, worrying about what everybody else thinks. Because there's always, always, right? There's always going to be someone doing better than you. Always. Mm -hmm. Like it doesn't matter where you are. You, you could be a multimillionaire. You could be a billionaire, right? Mm -hmm. There will always be someone that you could point to and be like, oh, but they have more this than me, or they have a bigger house than me, or they have it always. always. So like, mm -hmm. you know, like if you want to live your life like that, like that's your choice, right? Mm -hmm. But yeah. You're it's right. It's not, a choice. It's a choice. Mm -hmm. It's a mindset. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Absolutely. And hopefully after listening to this podcast, we have, you know, shift, shifts shifted some mindsets for some people today so yes <laughs> amazing thank you lisa you thank you thanks for having me absolutely